Lately, I've been hearing the phrase, the creation engine is held together with duct tape. Now, I remember this line popping up around the launch of Starfield two years ago, but lately it's resurfaced. Whenever I ask people repeating it to explain, I don't get answers. I usually just get blocked, so I decided to dig into the history myself. The most charitable interpretation of that phrase is this. Bethesda has been running the same engine since Morrowind, patched and patched for 20 years. If that's the idea, let's test it. Let's walk through the history of Bethesda's engine step by step, from Netimmerse to Gamebryo to Creation Engine, and finally to Creation Engine 2. Along the way, we'll look at the Oblivion Remaster hybrid approach, and even some legacy code that still lingers in Starfield today. Our story begins in 2002, with the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Bethesda licensed the Netimmerse engine from Numerical Design Limited, or NDL. Why Netimmerse? At the time, it was one of the few engines that used a scene graph architecture. That meant it could stream entire chunks of the world, cells, in and out of memory. For Bethesda, who wanted to build a huge, continuous open world, this was the right foundation. But the limits were obvious. Combat was clunky, animations were stiff, hit detection was dice roll based, and swinging your sword at a crate or cup did nothing. Props were static. There were no physics simulation at all. The world itself was masked by heavy fog. That wasn't just a style choice. It was a performance trick to hide the short draw distance on 2002 hardware. Still, what Netimmerse gave Bethesda was a persistent sandbox. If you dropped a weapon in Balmora and came back hours later, it was still there. If you looted a chest, the game remembered. That persistence, objects and actions being remembered across the entire world, became the DNA of every Bethesda game that followed. What do you want of me, Outlander? Four years later, Bethesda released The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. This time running on the Gamebryo engine. Netimmerse had rebranded after its parent company, NDL, was merged into emergent game technologies. On paper, it was the same lineage, but Bethesda stretched it far beyond its stock design. Oblivion introduced radiant AI. NPCs no longer stood frozen in simple loops. They had daily schedules. They would sleep, eat, work, even steal food if they got hungry. It was buggy at times, but it made the world feel alive in ways few RPGs had attempted. Lots of Tamiya. Nothing I'd like to talk about. Good to know. Have you heard any word about the other provinces? They say they Bethesda also bolted on havoc physics. Spirits. Suddenly Again, clutter could be knocked around and enemies collapsed into ragdoll deaths, maybe too enthusiastically. A simple apple could send plates flying across a tavern, but the unpredictability made every encounter feel dynamic. And Oblivion pushed presentation forward. HDR lighting, long distance vistas, and a sense of scale that made the Imperial City feel like the heart of a continent. 
Oblivion proved that Bethesda could take a licensed engine and twist it into their own modular persistent sandbox. But the more they added, the more the Gamebryo engine struggled under the weight of Bethesda's ambitions. By the time Fallout 3 shipped in 2008, Bethesda was already so deep into modifications that a full fork was inevitable. By 2011, Bethesda made the leap. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim didn't just patch Gamebryo. It forked it into a new house technology called the Creation Engine. For non-programmers, what does forking an engine mean? Think of it like remodeling a house. Bethesda kept the foundation they trusted the open world streaming and persistence model, but gutted and rebuilt the systems inside. They wrote a brand new scripting language called Papyrus. Unlike the old Oblivion scripts, Papyrus was event-driven and scalable. It could handle thousands of scripts firing across the world without breaking. They also shipped the creation kit which gave modders the same tools Bethesda used internally. That decision turned Skyrim into one of the most modded games of all time. They introduced Radiant Story, which generated quests dynamically by plugging into NPCs and dungeons across the map. Suddenly, quests weren't just hand-placed. They could be procedural. I don't know where we're going. But Sovereign Guard awaits. They rebuilt the animation system using Havoc behavior, blending animations into ragdolls for smoother combat and cinematic kill cams. All the while, the persistent sandbox remained. Drop an axe in Whiterun leave for a few hours, and it was still there when you returned. With Skyrim, Bethesda wasn't licensing someone else's tech anymore. The creation engine was their house technology, built for their unique brand of modular persistent open worlds. Fast forward to 2023, Bethesda launches Starfield, powered by Creation Engine 2. This wasn't just a patch to Skyrim's engine, it was a major re-architecture for modern hardware. CE2 introduced physics-based rendering pipeline with volumetric lighting, detailed materials, and global illumination approximations. Cities like New Atlantis showcased far more complex lighting and scale than Skyrim or Fallout ever could. Animation was overhauled with new rig and inverse kinematics. NPCs moved and emote more fluidly than before. But the biggest leap was procedural generation. CE2 could generate planets, outposts, and points of interest algorithmically while still preserving persistence. That meant reworking threading, memory allocators, and nav mesh streaming to a degree Bethesda had never attempted before. Physics also became gameplay. In Skyrim, ragdolls collapsed when you killed an enemy. In Starfield, a starborn gravity well can bend gravity itself, pulling props, NPCs, and AI behaviors into a single event inside one persistent cell. And just like Skyrim, Bethesda release, released the Creation Kit 2 to continue their modding tradition. 
creation engine to is the accumulation of two decades of iteration, keeping the sandbox DNA, but rebuilding the systems for an entirely new scale. Now here's the interesting twist. In 2025, Bethesda launched the Oblivion Remaster. And under the hood, it's a hybrid. The gameplay backend still runs on Gamebryo, the same lineage as 2006's Oblivion. But the visuals are handled by Unreal Engine 5. Why keep Gamebryo? Because it does what Unreal doesn't. It streams modular persistent cells in a massive open world. Unreal is amazing for visuals, but Bethesda's custom back end is still specialized for sandbox persistence. That choice proves something important. Bethesda doesn't cling to their own tech out of stubbornness. They use what works, whether that means evolving creation engine or pairing it with Unreal for the right job. Another reason people joke about duct tape is the little quirks that survive in the code. One fun example, the function drop ash pile. In Morrowind, this was used when a ghost died. Its body disappeared and an ash pile was dropped in its place. That function has survived for decades. In Fallout 4, it powered plasma crit deaths where enemies melted into piles. In Starfield, modder Twinkles McKitten tapped into it for a mod called Gorefield, which makes enemies explode into gore. For modders, this continuity is hilarious. It's why you sometimes hear the phrase held together with duct tape in a tongue-in-cheek way. But outside the modding community, people mistake it for an insult. In reality, it's a sign of Bethesda's commitment to continuity and modability. Proven systems stay around even as the engine is rewritten around them. Now resembles a couple of burnt spuds and a shriveled chipolata sausage. So is Bethesda's engine really held together with duct tape? No. What we've seen is 20 years of evolution, from Netimmerse to Gamebryo to Creation Engine, to Creation Engine 2. Each step rebuilt major systems, rendering, physics, animation, scripting, AI, while keeping one core idea alive, the modular persistent sandbox. The duct tape joke has a place in modding circles, but the truth is this. Bethesda's tech is what makes their worlds possible. It's why their games are moddable, why they persist in memory, and why players keep coming back. From static crates in Morrowind to bending gravity in Starfield, Bethesda's engine isn't duct tape, it's design. 